Somebody's going to get their head busted. Right. Hey, sir. <laughs> <laughs> right now, the bar is closed. The defendant will take his chair. And the rest of you kindly keep your mouths shut. Hey, hey, sir. Next man opens his face. You close if you hear. Yes, sir. Judge, I said set. I hear you, and I'm setting. Territory, New Mexico County Union, Circuit Court of Judge John Hogan's now in session. Case, people against Judd Hammerkline, this territory. Take your hats off. Charlie, get your hat off. Now, if any of you start talking out of turn out there, or otherwise trying to horn in on, on Judge's conversation, you're gonna find yourself in the water trough out there. Head first. That you ruling, Judge? That's right. Yes, sir. All right, Ephraim, let him in. so, John. No, well, let's hear it. Well, there ain't no two ways about it. Judd, you're as guilty as a liquored-up Paiute Indian on a Saturday night. What? Oh, you're you're the you the his own you. You're the foreman. What did you let him do it for? It is my... Fault. I want it quiet here. Judge says quiet. He wants quiet. All right, Wolski, you can sit down. Defendant, got anything to say before this court passes sentence? John, do you ever know a time when I didn't have something to say? All right, you men. The way you voted, that was the only way. Don't have it on your conscience. I would have done the same thing. All right, so I killed me a man. A lousy little card sharp. He wasn't the first one. Between him and the first time I saw the Apache some 30 years ago, I must have 20, 25 unmarked graves to my credit. Some of them I'm sorry for. I wish it had been done in another way. Couldn't be. And it couldn't with this lousy card sharp either. Two weeks ago, Monday, there were four Hammerkleins. Me and my three boys. Two weeks ago, Tuesday, there were three hammer clients. Me and these two kids right here. This lousy card shop. Pulled the hideout down here and he shot Albie. He's my youngest. He shot him stone cold dead and for what? A lousy six dollar stud pot. So I got my shotgun and I went looking for him. No fair draw, no back to back, no ten paces, nothing. And when I found him, I blew him out of the county. All right. There's no doubt I'm guilty, but so is every man in this room. Because every man in this room, including you, John, would do exactly the same thing. You tell him, Judd. We're behind you all the way. They'll never hang on Judd. Like Judd says, there's no doubt about it. 
Any one of us probably would have done the same thing. You know why? Because we don't know any better. Thirty years ago, we made our own rules out here because we had to. Twenty years ago, we watched those same rules change this sun-fried hell into a place a man could call home. And ten years ago, even a woman could sleep through a whole night without using a rifle for a pillow. That was then. That was yesterday. Book's closed now, Judge. Chapter, verse, and conscience. Now, it ain't even today we got to face now. It's tomorrow, the day after that. That's right. Back in Boston, they got laws. The same laws that worked for people in St. Louis and Buffalo. Now in Dead Horse. This is tomorrow. It's here now. And we can't sweep it or the law under our rugs. Not anymore. And we've all got to answer to the same law that works for everybody. You, me, even a little white-fingered gambler wearing a shiny black coat and, and carrying a hideout nickel plate pop gun. You killed him, Judd. No matter what he was or what he done, the law says you've got to answer for it. Stand up, Judd. For the willful premeditated murder, uh, Nate Nielsen, Occupation gambler, address unknown in the township of Dead Horse. All right, go on, go on, say it, John. We know you're the judge. Territory of New Mexico, you're sentenced to hang by the neck until you're dead. May the Lord have mercy on your soul. John Hogan, do you know that gambler had it coming to him? I do not know it. That's for a court to decide. Not you, uh, me, a judge. The law specifically states trial by jury, not by fury. Uh, if you think we're going to stand around and watch you hang our power... Mark, Mark, you just take it easy. You're not talking to John Jefferson Hogan now. You are talking to the law of the land. Sentence will be carried out at 3 o'clock on the 13th. That's Friday next. Mason. Both the prisoner and the execution are now your responsibility. All right. You're gonna have to get yourself another boy. I ain't gonna spring that trap on you. Nobody else will in Dead Horse. Well, that ain't something a friend can do, I know. I intend to telegraph the territorial governor, ask him to send you a professional. Oh, come on, Asa. Put that piece of tin back on your chest. You look naked without it. Well, you know and I know nobody's going to hang me, professional or otherwise. Now, Judge, I'm giving you... All right, all right, I know. I give you my word, no trouble. That goes for the boys and everybody else in town. I'll do what the law says. I'll sit in Ace's jail until 3 o'clock on the 13th. By then, Boston law will go back where it belongs. Dead horse will be back to normal, and I'll just go back to my place. Drinks are on me! <laughs> It's all right with you, Your Honor. Court's adjourned. All right, look, next time you're in town, come on out to the ranch. We'll fry us a steer. I got some whiskey we can work on, too. Like George says, without it, you, you look naked. So you understand it, John. That lawyer is talking about that might work out back in Boston, some of them northern towns, but it ain't gonna work here. Not for judge, and ain't no sentence, no jury, or no scaffold, or no hangman. Gonna make it a bit different. Three o'clock on the 13th. It's your responsibility.
Jim. Hmm. Tell me, is uh, scouting always like this? Mm. No. Nope. Can't always find a creek just good. I'll tell you what I might do. I might, uh, I wouldn't do this for anybody else. I, I want you to understand, but I might just step down and let you take over Ramrod. Yeah, I'll tell you, Roddy. Times I might look like a jackass, but if you think I'm going to make sounds like one, you're plumb... <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. You were saying. Just one more time, Rowdy. Just one more smart mouth out of you. What I want to know is, how do you make him sound off at the right time just like that? Who? Your cousin yonder. Cousin? You get lost. You holler now. You hear? All right, all right. I'm coming. Shut up. Easy now, fella. Come on, let's not make a foot race out of this. Stand there, give me a hand. Digging, he's still alive. Just what do you think you're doing? Well, I'm washing the dishes, just like you said. And what, solid soap? You got enough suds there to wash the spots off every cow in Texas. 
Mr. Wishbone, you said cleanliness was next to godliness. I also said that wastefulness is worse than sinfulness. Now, dump that stuff and rinse those things off in plain water. But... I said plain water, you hear? But, uh... You heard me, plain water. fever. I cleaned out the wound good, so there shouldn't be any complications, but with the head wounds, you never can tell. I don't get this, boss. Hmm? Hmm? Ah, he's got money, watch, extra food. Doesn't seem to make too much sense. The man's bush worked for a lot of reasons. Robbery's only one of them. Yeah, but why would they go to all the trouble to bury him? Any identification? No, not even a name, nothing. What are you mumbling about? And I looked, and behold, a pale horse. And his name that sat on him was Death. Book of Revelations. Well, look again. Dead men don't breathe. Death is many things to many men, senor. And only death can live in a grave of stones. Jesus, maybe you'd better go back and work on the remuda. Huh? Wishbone will call you if he needs you. There is no need for help, Senor Fever. Not for him, and not for the one whose life death has come to claim. Mm. He's coming round. Just rest easy, mister. You're going to be all right. <laughs> Henrietta. I don't know the lady, mister. My name's Wishbone. Oh. You're not Henrietta. Oh. Who can answer my questions, Nine? Sing 99 and 90. Oh, what is whiter than milk? What is softer than silk? Snow is whiter than milk. The wind is softer than silk. What is louder than a horn? What is sharper than a thorn? Thunder is louder than a horn. And death is sharper than a thorn. Well, he's out again. He must have been hurt worse than I thought. Sick, all right. He needs a doctor. Why don't you double back to Fort Collins come first light? There's an army surgeon there. Nothing more we can do here. Mm-hmm. 
Hushy. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Sorry, gentlemen. Well, I heard some at the wagon, I thought... You thought. You are right, mister. I, uh... I, uh... Let's get him over where he belongs. Craziest thing I ever heard of. You trying to get up after being hit in the head like that. Well, I... You know, what's the matter? That idiot hurt your neck. No. That's an old injury. One from beyond the grave, you might say. Well, what was you trying to do anyways? Well, I... Well, I thought he was some kind of thief. You told me to watch the wagon guard with my life. Well, you aren't gonna have any life to guard if you don't stir up that fire and hot up some broth. This man needs food, and he needs it now. Yes, sir, right away. Who are... Who are you? My name's Favor. I'm the trail boss here. There's Wishbone, our cook, that's helping you. That was Mushy, the cook's louse, who tackled you. There's Roddy Yates, the ramrod, who found you, and the rest of the crew. There's a cattle drive. Yes, but what? Where? Well, we found you this morning under two feet of rocks. Oh. <laughs> then it wasn't a nightmare. I remember. Just what did happen anyways, uh, Mr. What's your name? Plew. Hannibal H. Plew. Lately of New England, more recently from Ellsworth. I think it was in the state of Kansas. But as for this morning, I can't seem to sort that out. See, I was riding along with Henrietta. Henrietta's my mule. Where is she? With the remuda, senor. Oh, I'm very grateful. Like most innocents, we have developed something of a kinship. About this morning... I was riding along, and then suddenly, something struck me. I have a I have a blurry memory of rocks being placed on me and the sound of laughter. It's nice and hot, Mr. Wishbone. Ooh. First you try to strangle him, and then you try to scald him to death. It's not really his fault, you know. I, I was trying to take my things from the wagon. Here, let's try to get some of this down where it'll do the most good. Is he being a fervent coward from my earliest recollection? I was trying to slip away without your knowledge. Well, with a head wound like that, it sure don't make much sense. He who has a thousand friends has never a friend to spare, but he who has one enemy will find him everywhere. I evidently found my enemy this morning, and then... See, when I revived, when I came to in your midst, I was afraid that I was renewing my enemy's acquaintance. So I have a little confession to make. You see, I pretended that I was still delirious until I could find a propitious moment to escape. But I see that I evaluated the situation wrong, and I wanted to apologize now for any inconvenience that I may have caused. Uh, Mr. Plew, about this morning, you got any idea who jumped you? I really haven't the slightest idea. What are you doing out here all by yourself anyway? I have a very pressing engagement in, in the town of Dead Horse, and because the stage coach transportations only make one trip a month, why... I felt obliged to strike out alone with Henrietta. You was just riding along and somebody took a shot at you and buried you for no reason at all. Well, no thinking animal acts without reason. And no enemy strikes without a cause. But, gentlemen, in this particular case, neither the reason nor the cause, I understand. It's your problem. Have it your way. You can tell the sheriff at Dead Horse whatever you want. You're going to Dead Horse? That's right. Going to pick up supplies. Till then, you can ride in the supply wagon with Mushy. Oh, that would be splendid, but on one condition. I must be there by the 13th. Today's the 10th. The day after tomorrow, we can get you there in time. Oh, I can't tell you how delighted I am. Or how delicious this was. Oh, 
I'll see if I can't rush Lee up some more. Senor. You quoted from the book of Revelations. It was chapter six, I believe. And I look and behold a pale horse. And his name that sat on him was death. I ride a white mule, not a white horse. My name is Hannibal, not death. See, fear of the unknown is a vagrant fancy without visible means of support. Or perhaps it is fear of oneself. Do you uh, mind some company? No, sir. Let's go. It's not that uh, I object to your wagon. It's just that, uh, that the steady diet of that canvas siding makes for monotonous landscape. Well, after last night, I didn't think you'd want to ride with me. Last night is a page that's already turned in the book of memories. It's gone, forgotten, meaningless. Not to you, maybe, but not to me. When I do something wrong, I just can't forget. You sound like a man who's feeling sorry for himself, sir. Somebody has to. Well, around here, I'm just tanglefoot and mushy, a clown who can't do anything right. Well, even when he does everything right. What do I mean? Well, every once in a while, I get sick of it. Get sick of everything. Gaudiamus igetur juvenes dum sumus, post jucundum juventutum. Let us rejoice and be glad, therefore, for the young life ahead of us. Think where we might be today, Mr. Musgrove, if Columbus had turned away from his curiosity, if the spirit of Don Quixote had been struck down by the turn of the windmill, if Merlin had believed that magic was the sole device of the devil. Merlin? Yes, he was the magician in the court of King Arthur. Surely you've heard about him. The mysteries and the complexities of ledger domain, of the hand that moves quicker than the eye, of the art of the false bottom, of water that runs uphill instead of down, of the miraculous conversion of a hat into a lair for rabbits, the transformation of something into nothing. Now, that is miracles, most people, but mere tricks to the anointed few. Now, here, here is the three of hearts, you see. Watch it. I'm going to place it right there, sir. There they are. Well, where'd it go? Where'd the card go? Here you are, sir. There you are. A mere trick, nothing more, nothing less. Uh, would you, uh, I mean, would you mind showing me that trick, Mr. Plu? On one condition, Mushy. That you call me Hannibal.
happening? Zeus. Over there. I'm uh, real granddaddy. It hit you, huh? <sighs> We're gonna have to open that up. Mushy, go get my medical kit and build up a fire. Hurry! Hey, we'll set up camp here. Hold up the herd. Right. Settle back, Jesus. Don't move around any more than you have to. We don't want that poison to circulate. Oh, poison can't be stopped. Any more than death can be stopped. You make it sound like the Grim Reaper is taking up cattle driving as a hobby, Jesus. Forget it. You're gonna be just fine. See, sure don't look good. It's a fever I don't like. Maybe I'd better double back to Collins, pick up a doctor. No, it's too late for that. Unless something is done right now. It's... Like what? Well, some hot compresses in that arm, a draw to draw out the poison, uh, and keep him up, keep him moving, moving, moving. Moving oh. with that fever? Take another look there, Mr. Wishbone. These are the classic toxic poison symptoms. There's the fever. And the general lassitude and the gradual collapse of the reflex system. Evidently, the tourniquet and the incision were too late because the poison is already in the bloodstream. Yeah, but moving him, what good would that do? Well, it'll keep the blood circulating and the poison with it, keep it from localizing until such a time as the toxic effects can be neutralized. Wish? No. I don't like it because I don't understand it. And I don't like it because I don't like being told what to do by a question mark that was dug out of a pile of rocks and he don't even know how he got there. And don't belong out here in the first place. Well, like it or not, it's the only thing to be done. Now, get me some hot water and some compresses, as many as you can find. Quick. Mm -hmm. Hey, Seuss. Can you understand? It's not muerte. Not death, my boy. Not yet. Will you trust me? Do I have any choice? No, Jesus. There is no choice. Two cats from Kilkenny. Say it. Who thought there was one cat too many? I say that. One cat too many. One cat too many. Right? Say it. So they fought and they fit. They fought and they fit. They fought and they fit. Right? Say it. And they scratched and they bit. They scratched and they bit. Say it. Uh, I don't know that one. How about uh, Hickory Dickory Duck? Huh? Come on. Hickory Dickory Duck. Uh, I don't know that one. That's so, so good. Except for their nails and the tip of their tails, instead of two cats, there weren't any. Come on, hey, Susie, either talk or drink. Cats of Kilkenny. Louder, louder. Each thought there was one cat too many. Ah, louder. So they fought and they fit, and they scratch and they bit. Very good. Till with exception, for the nails and tips of the tails, yeah. there weren't 
Instead of two cuts, there weren't any. There once were two all cuts. Right, all right, all right, all right. You can stop now there, Jesus. Fever's broken, I think. All right, all he needs now is a little rest. A little rest? You're carrying him around all night, and he needs rest? Yeah, next thing you know, he'll want breakfast in bed. No need for concern, gentlemen. By this time tomorrow, he'll be fine. He'll be fine. Two hours ago, I wouldn't have given him two minutes, and now... He's fine. It's that simple. About as simple as doing a cartwheel over the North Star. I don't eat crow very often, Hannibal, but I'll sure do it now. Between the cradle and the grave lies but a haircut and a shave. No, that was no miracle, no cabalistic incantation. Simple application of medical theory. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it don't. Sometimes it don't. We know this much, that when the wheel turns, somebody wins, somebody loses. Yeah, well, you turn your wheel any today, and you're sure gonna come up double aught. Now, that head of yours isn't anywhere near healed, and you've been up all night. Well, healed or not, or tired or not, Henrietta and I must be moving on. You mean now, today? My appointment in Dead Horse is still tomorrow, Mushy. Well, you don't do something with that head. Your appointment's gonna be with a funeral. Yours. Gee, whatever it is, a day or two won't make any difference. Time is still going. No, Mushy. With me, time stands still. I go on. Well, Mr. Faber, I want to tell you how much obliged to you, sir. The man who bushwhacked you, Hannibal. What about him? Ah, nothing to be afraid of in a failure. A wish? Well, I could leave now. I might go with you. Well, if the difference between a birth and a death is only a shave and a haircut, I better get them both in while I can. Mushy. Just hitch up the team. Yes, sir. I'm very grateful to you. It's more the other way around, Hannibal. If you ever want to take up cattle driving, you know where to come. All right. Because if there are any complications with Jesus, why repeat the same procedure, keep him moving, force liquids. Beyond that, of course, no man born of woman can escape his destiny, be it toxic poisoning. Or an unmarked grave on an unmapped trail. You call it destiny. I'm learning not to disagree with you, but... Uh... Still, it seems to me it's just a piece of luck. You and Jesus just tell the right cards at the right time. And a good card player knows precisely the right moment to rise up and go home. Thought you said his town was dead and past burying. Looks like it got itself resurrected. Said this hanging's got to go but a book. That means we need a real hanging tree. 
Come on, I'll buy you a drink. What's going on? Does it look like a taffy pull? We want any smart mouths. We'll just take in the stage show. Yeah, that's just about what I'm beginning to look like and feel like, friend. A hammer swinging stage show. You'd think these people never saw two boards being nailed together. This is being built for him. At least so uh, old Judge Hogan says. He set the stretching for 3 o'clock tomorrow. You see something wrong? This lumber could have been cured longer. Yes, it'll do, it'll do. Where I come from, a man says a hang don't usually wander the streets. Judd ain't wandering, he's going to lunch. You don't think he's gonna take his meals in jail, do you? Yeah, Judd Hammerklein may be a lot of different things, but he's all the same when he comes to his word, and that's what he gave Asa. Asa? Yeah, Tanner, Sheriff Tanner. He told him he's gonna do just like the judge said, stay put and not try to break loose, at least until uh, after the time set for the hanging. After the hanging? Well, now, you don't think there's anybody in Dead Horse gonna spring a trap on Judd Hammerklein, do you? Well, he not only owns this town, but half the territory. And uh, every second cousin in it. Plus which, he's got a couple of sons and a range crew that don't take no. Not from nobody. Now, Judd ain't gonna hang. Not here, not nowhere. Then why build a scaffold? Uh, you heard what he said. Judd said everything's gotta go by the book. Judge Hogan says he's gonna stay in jail and hang at three sharp tomorrow. And we're gonna do just what the judge says. Except for the hanging. Won't do. Never do at all. Just what do you think you're doing? I say it won't do. What won't do? You men were kind enough to drive me into town. The least I can do is stand you for a round of libations. Libations? That's drinks. Name your own poison, as the saying goes. Like huh? I said, what won't do? What do you think, Mr. Wishbone? Well, the supplies can wait. After you, Hannibal. All right. For the last time, what won't do? You think you're some kind of an expert? An expert is one who knows more and more about less and less. I only know one thing that that scaffold might do for hanging laundry, perhaps. But a man, never. Stakes in the territory. Burn tasty black all the way through. They better be, otherwise I'm gonna park your backside on that stove out there. <laughs> all right, belly up, boys. Your drinks are ready. Oh, I've seen quieter stampedes. Uh, maybe that's because they weren't so thirsty. Please. Yes, sir. I'll take that. Uh, you take what's put in front of you. <laughs> that don't make sense, Paul. A condemned man's supposed to have a bad appetite. Condemned or not, I'm a grown boy. Gentlemen, you got help. Jake. It's him. Can't be. I'm telling you, it's him. You can't be. Sheriff Tanner? Mm -hmm. My name is Plue, Hannibal H. Plue. A Judge Hogan telegraphs the territorial governor for my services. Three o'clock tomorrow, I believe. Then you're the hanging man. I'm afraid your scaffold won't do. The drop is far too short, and the trap is far too unreliable. 
I shall need some equipment and some assistance. Oh, Hannibal, why didn't you tell us? Well, 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 why do you know? A real live hangman, right here in Dead Horse. Take a good look, boys. You don't often see a professional man in these parts. Tell me, how many scalps you got in your belt? 10, 20? You know, you don't look like much. But in your profession, looks don't count for much, do they? It's a shame you had to come all this way for nothing. Me, there's nothing I enjoy more than watching a professional man work. But life's full of disappointments, and we gotta live with them. All right, Mark, pay him off. With what? Another 30-30 slug? Who the heck are you, fella? My name's Wishbone. He answers to Mushy. We're with a drive a few miles south. Mr. Wishbone. As for Hannibal there, we found him under a pile of rocks. Somebody put him there with a rifle. I said no trouble. I gave my word. Uh, well, I was here in town, Pa. I mean, what happened, that was maybe 20 miles south of here. Uh, maybe somebody's rifle slipped. And that pile of rocks just happened to rain down. <laughs> maybe you'd like some of this in writing. The county line, that's as far as my jurisdiction goes. If you got any complaints, why don't you see a federal marshal? All right, all right. This shouldn't have happened, but it did. I'll make it easy by upping the ante. That way nobody gets hurt. Hey, hangman. What'll you take to, uh, to forget what you're here for? The territory's compensation is more than adequate, thank you. All I need from you, sir, is your age, your height, and your weight. Stampede the whole herd. Ready, Scarlet. Everybody out to the herd. There's nothing but paste in here. Well, she, will you stop playing around in there and see if there's anything worth saving? Well, there ain't nothing in here that ain't wet. Well, it's all got to come out anyway. What was you doing down here getting washed away? Why didn't you get up on the plateau when that cloud opened up? Well, the horses shied. What with the weather and all? You can't handle a team of horses by now? You'd better start taking some lessons, huh? And you, why didn't you get up on the plateau anyways? We well, always say, Mr. Favor, to follow Mr. Wishbone. Well, is anything savable? Well, I can scrape up enough for about two meals, then we're gonna have to resupply right from scratch. Well, 
Well, they spread out for about two days, but at least we got them stopped. I got some boys down by the river pulling them out of the mud. Well, you come to the wrong place for your little gold star. You, you got a nerve even showing up back here after turning them into the river instead of the hills. Well, they headed me. I believe it. You ain't even got the brain so I'll think a dumb cow. Senor Schriever, we're in very bad trouble with the horses. Well, I pretend it didn't even say that. Oh, it's true, senor. Four lost, half a dozen crippled. What happened? Didn't you cut them loose when the storm hit? Oh, well, a tree fell. A tree? You had them tied to a tree when that storm hit? Well, I thought... Uh, you uh, thought? You thought? What is the use? Anyway, you know, there are times when I'm sick to death of this job. What in the world possesses a man to put up with this kind of foolishness, huh? Give me a reason. Just one good reason, huh? The good life? Beef and beans three times a day. Lucky to get two nights sleep in a row. And surrounded by a bunch of idiots. Well, maybe it's the glory. Sure, it must be the glory. It sure ain't the money, leastwise I ain't seen any of it. Boy, I swear, one of these days, I'm really going to up and quit. Hey, that's a real good idea. Why don't you quit? Well, before you make up your mind to anything definite, would you mind picking me up a new canvas for the wagon and a load of supplies, maybe a couple of spare wheels? A new coffee pot. All right, all right, I said I'd give up. Ashton Corners is pretty close. Oh. Right in in the morning, see what I can do. Oh, there's just one more thing, boss. As long as we're near this Ashton Corners outfit, the men sure could stand the night off. <laughs> 24 hours of roundup work out there. He's thinking of a night off. <laughs> Man has got to be an absolute ultimate idiot. <laughs> what do I say now? Well, when he's feeling like this, you don't say anything at all. worry about a thing. Mr. Ashton Warner says you're to have another year's extension. He'll be sorry not to see you, but he's terribly busy. Oh, my goodness. You tell him I said God bless him, Miss Sarah. Good luck, young man. <laughs> oh, uh, is Al in? Al? Oh, I'm Mr. Ashton Warner. My name's Favor Gil Favor. I need a bank draft cashed. Oh, yes. You're the cow driver. I've heard Mr. Ashton Warner speak of you. But he's left instructions not to be disturbed. Could you return later? Nope. I couldn't move another step, lady. Well, just camp right here. Thanks. <laughs>
going to the post office, Beth. I'll be right back. Yes, Good morning, boys. Good morning, Mrs. Ashton Warner. friend of Albert's. <laughs> Boys, I know it's difficult to remember, but a bank is a respectable institution, and we must try to keep our dignity. Yes, Mrs. Ashton Warner. Yes, Mrs. Ashton Warner. since last time I saw. How's things down at the Red Diamond? I don't work there anymore. Is that right? I got married. Hey, congratulations. I'm Mrs. Ashton Warner now. You? Albert? Well, congratulations anyways. How long have I been to sleep? Is Albert still in? Well, suppose we find out. <clears throat> Albert. Oh, hello, honey. This is a surprise. I didn't expect you today. Well, I never would have guessed it. Oh. Gil! Reach, partner! Albert. Now, now, please take off that silly thing. You're a respectable banker. What if someone came in here and saw you playing cowboy like that? Did you ever see anything like this? A pillar of the community, the town's most respected citizen, and he spends his time reading lurid magazines and daydreaming his life away. I don't really see anything wrong. Albert, will you please be home in time to dress for dinner? Oh, sure, I won't be late, honey. Uh, Gil, it was nice to see you again. Frailty, thy name is woman. The man who wrote that must have been a hermit. Um, w. Ah, you think you got troubles. You should have been with the herd last night. That thunderstorm just about washed us out of business altogether. Maribel didn't really mean that. It's just that I... I sort of disappoint her somehow. Uh, I, I don't seem to be able to do anything right anymore. I don't know about that. It's a pretty smart draw you're working up there, fella. You mean it? Oh, well, I've seen a lot worse. Nah, Maribel's right. I'm... I'm just dreaming my life away. Oh, come on. A man's got to dream a little bit. You know, Gil, you may be right at that. When I get to thinking of the open trail, sleeping under the stars, beef and beans, singing round the campfire, Oh, wait a minute. It's, it ain't quite exactly like that, Al. Honest. What well, ain't a drove for alive wouldn't change places with what you got here. But it isn't the same thing. And, and this would prove it to her. That I'm a real man's man, I mean. Gil, you gotta take me on as a drover. That would show her I'm no dreamer. I've read all about it. I can do it. I know I can. Uh, well, look, it, it really isn't all it's cracked up to be, Al. You said yourself I was pretty handy with a gun, and, and I know all about cattle. If you get caught in a stampede, you just roll up in the ball and they'll go right past you, right? Where did you find that? Well, it's, it's right. Oh, I believe you. I believe you. Never mind. How about it, Gil? Please. It would make things right between Maribel and me. Look, in, in the first place, uh, it wouldn't be fair to the other men taking on an inexperienced man. I know. You think I can't do it? You and Maribel. Probably the rest of the town, too. Gee, Al, I, I'm really sorry. I, I'd like to help you out, uh, honest. Uh, uh, this bank draft, I... I need the cash. Oh, sure. Well, I'll 
See you next year, I guess. Good luck. I'm sure gonna need it. I'm scraping the bottom of the barrel as it is. Just be enough to get the herd moving again. Sheriff Billings, I'm afraid I, afraid I can't, Gil. He left town to round up some strays yesterday. He won't be back for a week or more. A week? I can't wait that long. I won't have any herd left. Sure, I'm sorry, Gil. Not going to be as sorry as this town is after I take it apart board by board. Oh, now, Gil, you know there's no sense in that. Whoever robbed you is probably long gone. Yeah. I'll be long gone, too, if I don't get that herd moving. There's, there's nothing for it, but you have to give me a loan, Al. Oh, I'm sorry, Gil. I sure wish I could help you out, but you know, I can't go around giving out loose loans. I got a board of directors to think of. You know I'm good for it. We're only a month from the railhead. Yeah, I know, but uh, you understand. It's like you not being able to take me on as a drover. Same problem, so to speak. I'll tell you what, though. I'll make you a deal. All right, all right. I'll take you on as a drover. Give me the loan. Uh, not quite that. I'll take the herd to market as trail boss. As now, what? Now, I'm making you a good deal, a good deal, Gil, if you'll just listen to me. Oh. Now, you get your share at the end of the drive. I'm not interested in the money. And on top of that, you'll run the bank while I'm gone. $400 for the month. Nice, luxurious office. You said yourself any drover would be happy to change places with me. Oh, what am I thinking of? No, no, it wouldn't work out. The men wouldn't go along with it. You don't know anything about bossing a herd. I'll just have to get the money someplace else. The telegraph wires are down if you were thinking of wiring. Mm -hmm. I'll just have to find out how good my credit is in this town. Mr. Broxton's been a very nasty man since his wife ran off with that cow hand. And I wouldn't bother Red. Business has been bad at the Diamond since Maribel left the place. Ran off with a cow hand. I had about a dozen last nail in the coffin. Hit by a thunderstorm, heard stampeded, get hit in the head and robbed, and no credit. Of course, on the other hand, uh, you do have a way out. Those 
coffee grains dried out yet. Oh, ain't any coffee ready yet? In this? No, there isn't any coffee ready yet. Pretty good, Mr. Wishbone. Well, straighten this thing out, put them in there, get some more wood on the fire, and put the coffee on. Oh, am I glad to see you. Hey, you didn't happen to bring any coffee, did you? That we got, I'm even ashamed to no, serve. No, didn't bring a thing. Matter of fact, I just came to pick up what's left of my gear. What do you mean? Just that. Oh, got them all rounded up, boss. All except about 100 head. Hey, good day's work. Well, I guess that does it. Oh, uh, by the way, you'll have a new trail boss come morning. What do you mean, what? new trail oh, boss? Wait a minute, you didn't, you, you didn't take me serious when I said that thing about quitting. You want to know? I think it's the first really sensible thing you've said. Well, nothing more to be said about it. It's done. Anybody doesn't want to go along with it, well, it's your share you'll be giving up. Uh, just like that? That's it. His name is uh, Ashton Warner, Albert Ashton Warner. What's he doing with two names? He'll be here in the morning. What does this uh, Warner Ashton fella do? Where's he from? Ashton Warner. He's the local banker. Banker? What's that? Uh, what's he know about uh, trail herding? No way. He's read all about it. Read all? Oh, that must make him really uh, swell. What kind of a deal you got with him? I'm pretty good. I'm going to look after the bank. I almost forgot. Compliments of Mr. Warner. What's that? What's that? Money, that's what it hey, is. Money. Look at this. $20 gold pieces. Hey, enough fair for everybody. Yeah. I didn't think you'd holler quite so loud when you saw $20 gold pieces. Boss, what's wrong? Well, not a thing. I just guess I made myself a pretty good deal after all. Good, Mr. Wishbone. You want me to hot up the fire? Yeah, you do that. Hot up the fire and then sit in it, will you? Yes, sir. Did you say 3,000 cows? Give or take a few. And you're going to take over the drive? No problem. Not for a man of my experience. I was dogging steers before I took my first step. Uh, Hi, Gil. How'd it go? Oh, I'll go along with you, all right. Gold seems to be something they understand. Uh, money talk. Sure does. Well, you get in the bank, you'll see what I mean. Oh, uh, Tony, there's Mr. Faber. He's the one who's going to be running the bank. Oh, uh, take any chair in the house. <laughs> oh, Gil, when we get through here, I'll take you over to my tailor. Huh? He'll fix you up from head to foot. A part of the business, you might say. Oh, and there's a director's meeting tomorrow, every Tuesday. But don't worry, they'll help you, let you know what's going on. Nothing much can go wrong in a month. Albert Ashton Warner, what is this I hear? A trail boss. You? You don't even know which way is north. And I do so. It's that way. You can't be serious. You'll be the laughingstock of the whole town. What about the bank? Gil's taking care of the bank. Gil? You have lost your mind. And I won't stand for it. Either you come to your senses and give up this foolishness, oh, or I... Oh, honey, I'll only be gone a month. Well, if you want to make a fool of yourself, you go ahead. This time, you'll really do it. But don't expect me to be here when you come back. And I suppose you think you know how to run a bank. We'll be bankrupt before you're through. Boy, when she says something, it stays said. Looks like our deal fell through. I guess you'll have to think about giving me a loan again, old buddy, huh? No, no, no. Everything's going to be fine now. I know Maribel. Everything's going to be fine, hmm? Whatever you say, Al. Oh, 
coffee ready yet? Every time I turn around, you're belly aching about the coffee. Mushy, will you see our friend gets a cup here? Sure don't seem right to me that a man should have two names, like this Ashton Warner. Maybe he had two fathers. Hey, you stupid. One of them is probably his mother's name. Well, I got a mother, too, but I sure don't use her name. Well, maybe you ought to. What? This man, what kind of trail boss will he be? Who cares, as long as he keeps handing out these here gold pieces? Well, how bad can he be? Rowdy can sure pull us through, but Mr. Favor, well, he acts like this storm was our fault. Yes, he has never been so bad. Now, don't go running Mr. Favor down. I've never known him yet to not have a good reason for anything he does. He's probably in some real serious trouble. I'm Albert Ashton Warner. Mr. Favor told you about me last night. I'm your trail boss. Yeah, well, Ruddy Yates, uh, Ramrod. I'm very pleased to meet you, sir. Yes, this here's Wishbone, uh, cook. Very important man on a drive, the cook. How do you do, sir? And this is uh, my louse, Mushy. Ah, Mr. Mushy. What, did you hear that? He called me mister. Uh, this here's uh, Toothless over there. Mr. Toothless, how do you do, sir? Uh, Quince, Scarlet. Mr. Quince. Jesus. Scarlet. Mr. Jesus. Con mucho gusto, senor. Uh, mucho. If I could have my horse taken care of. Oh, I'll take care of him, senor. Thank you. Well, men, shall we get started? We have a lot to settle at our first meeting. I always say the only proper way to run a business is through parliamentary procedure. Mr. Yates, if you'd prepare a suitable setup, uh, perhaps some wooden boxes for seating, some of the men will help you. Yeah. Who has the best penmanship? Well, who can write? Uh, you, Mr. Uh, Toothless? Me? Me? No, no, I can't even read. Well, if I do say so myself, I got a pretty good hand. Fine, fine. Mr. Wishbone will act as secretary. You'll need some paper and a pencil to take the minutes of the meeting. I'll explain the procedure as we go along. Just regular parliamentary procedure, you know. Well, come on, men. Let's get started. Well, then, to recap, uh, Mr. Wishbone will lead one of the special committees to determine the necessary supplies. Mr. Jesus, you better confer with him on the needs of the Remuda. Uh, Mr. Yates, of course, being ramrod, will lead the standing committee until we reach market. Yeah, well, don't forget about the... The floor recognizes Mr. Yates. Uh, uh, don't forget about the strays we got to round up. Oh, yes. Uh, Mr. Yates will also head a committee to round up the strays. All the drovers will report to him at the termination of this meeting. Now, uh, I'd like to hear a motion to adjourn. Uh, Mr. Mushy, perhaps you'd like to make that motion. Uh, sure, what would I say? Just say I make a motion to adjourn. Oh, I make a motion to adjourn. Fine, fine. Anyone second the motion? Uh, Mr. Quince? Yeah. Just say I second the motion. Oh, yeah, well, I don't mind us second it. Aye, everybody. Aye, aye, aye. aye, aye. Opposed? Adjourned. 
And my office will be set up over by that tree if anyone needs to see me. Bad, but this is ridiculous. You know, I, I wonder why Mr. Favor done this to us. It's gotta be done, that's for sure. Oh, he's gotta be in terrible trouble. And so, if we can assure the school committee that a long-term loan is available to them, it will facilitate their work considerably. Whoa, whoa, back up, back up. As I get it, the town hadn't even voted on this issue yet. Would the chairman care to rise to a point of order? Just want to stop some of this foolishness. Now, if the town hasn't voted on the school bond issue, I don't see the point of all this nonsense. After the town's voted, well, then we can do something about it. Until then, well, we just seem to be wasting a lot of time with a lot of hot air, huh? Well. I refuse to be insulted in such a manner. I make a motion that this meeting be adjourned. I second the motion. Aye. Aye. Good day. What in the world got into them? Oh, is that some people out there waiting to see me, Miss Goodley? Yes, sir. They want to know if anything's going to change now that Mr. Ashton Warren is gone. Their mortgages and loans. Yeah, well, send them in. Send them in. Yes, sir. Hi, Paul. What did you say to those board members? You have alienated every one of them. Do you think you're running a bunch of cows around here? This is a respectable bank. Oh, I knew this would happen. Look, Favor. You get out there and you tell Albert Ashton Warner that he's to come back here immediately. You know, you ain't done nothing but holler for the last two days. Oh, until you learn some manners, why don't you get out? Uh, uh, just... And if you want a message delivered to Albert, I suggest you deliver it yourself. Well, hello, ma'am. Get out of my way! You uh, just had the pleasure of meeting Mrs. Ashton Warner. Oh. Do all uh, uh, bankers uh, dress like this? Well, this one does, fella. Oh, well, I'll talk to you. Well, what can I do for you? Um, business is rather pressing, you know? Uh, well, it's uh, about this Ashton Werner fella, boss. I'm not your boss anymore. All right, all right. But, uh, you know, he isn't going to make a trail, boss. Uh, this morning, first thing, he calls a meeting. You imagine if we had a stampede or something? Uh, maybe we'd all gather around and sit on boxes and talk about it. Yeah, Albert is pretty big on meetings. Yeah, well, anyway, the boys and I, we thought that if, if there's some trouble, you know, if something's wrong, maybe we could all help out. Look, I keep telling you, there's nothing wrong. I just decided to pick up a new business. and Ain't nothing wrong with banking at all. Well, you're an outdoors man. You couldn't be cooped up in a place like this. Look, I've got to get back to work. Well, don't you care about the herd? Will I'll end up in Alaska somewhere. Well, I suggest instead of uh, standing around here belly aching and wasting your time that you try training him for the job. You might be surprised to find what a tough little guy he is. Training him? He can't even ride a horse. Well, everybody had to learn sometime. Everybody... Well, I never thought I'd see the day when you'd sell the herd down the river, but I guess I was wrong. <laughs> All right. I'll train him. I'll make him the best little trail boss you ever saw. Huh. Mr. Ashton Warner say to you, uh, to mount the horse, you take the reins in your left hand, grab the mane right here. So you have the horse's mane. Put your right hand up here, right by the horn. Your left foot in the stirrup, and just swing right up. Yeah. See that? Sure, sure. Here, let me try it. Uh, 
You take the left reins and I mean the reins in your left hand and your right. Yo, know, you don't do anything with your right hand. You grab the, grab the horn. You put your. Yeah, but. Put in the. Uh, but it's put the, your foot um, in the stirrup. It's the other and then <laughs> now are you gonna listen to reason? You're never gonna make a trail boss out of that fella, no matter what you do. Yeah, I know it. Mr. Favor won't change his mind. We're just gonna have to make him change his mind. Now look, if we get rid of this fella and we don't have any trail boss at all, Mr. Favor will be back in a minute. What suggestion you got to make? Do just exactly what Mr. Favor said. Train him. Only we'll train him in such a way he'll never want to see a trail drive again. Give him the old business, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I can show him the red dog trick. That ought to get him. Yeah. And I'll let Mushy do the cooking. Oh, that's perfect, Mushy. If that don't poison him, nothing will. How's it going? Yes, Kim. That was wonderful, men. Just wonderful. Another day or two, and I'll be a seasoned Galahad of the prairies. Oh, what's this? Slum and gullion, I bet. The pride of the plains. <laughs> Oh, superb. Truly a gourmet's delight. I've never tasted anything so good. A double portion, if you please, Mr. Mushy. Well, yes, sir. Well, Mr. Ashton Warner, all you have to do is brace yourself just like this. All right. Now, you go ahead and take it. I got him. I got him. Hey! I got him. This here is a brand and iron. Now you take that there thing and you slap it right here. You got it? Right there. Right there. Your silly games. And you do fractions or percentages? Of course I can. What? And you count. This is serious. I've never been more serious in my life. You can't count, get out. I got enough trouble as it is. You don't know what trouble is, you blockhead. There's going to be a run on the bank. A what? A run on the bank. Now do you see the mess you've made of things around here? We'll be bankrupt. Well, don't just sit there. Go lock the doors and get Albert back here. Get Albert back? Get Albert back? Now, what in the world do you think drove him out of here in the first place? You nagged and you scolded and you pushed him until he had to leave. Me? That's right, and don't try to outshout me, lady. You took one of the nicest little guys in the world and you tried to change him until he didn't know what he was. Now, you just let me say something to you. His daydreams of being a cowboy wasn't hurting nobody until you pushed him too far. So now he's out there trying to prove he's a man all over again, and just for your sake. You don't understand one thing. Uh, he'll probably get himself killed trying to do it. But are you worried about him? No, you're worried about your precious little bank and what people are going to think. Mr. Favor. I know, Sarah. But I... I know. I'll be out in a minute. So don't come belly aching and crying to me, because it is much too late. Yeah, all right, all right, take it easy, take it easy. The bank ain't gonna go close. Then why did you call in all the mortgages? And why are the loans suddenly due? Because the loans and the mortgages were way overdue. Uh, I was just tidying things up. There were dates in every one of them. Mr. Ashton Warner didn't do business like that. No, he knew no, our no, problems, no. and he went along with us. Now, what's the good of us having our money in the bank if we ain't allowed to use it? That's right. Yeah. It's our money. Yeah. All right, all right. I'll tell you what I'll do. Um, I'll give you extensions, just like Albert did, huh? But we don't want to do business with you, Mr. Favor. 
We want Mr. Ashton Warner back here. Yeah. Now, he's a fine gentleman. Now, he's a man we could respect, a man to trust our money to. Now, we want him back here in the morning, or else we're going to start a bank of our own. That's yeah. Right. That's right. yeah. That's right. All right, all right, take it easy. I'll, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'll go talk to Albert, all right? Remember, Mr. Favor, if he's not back here in the morning, we're drawing our money out. Yeah. Do you think you'll come back? I wouldn't know. <laughs> oh, you woman. I'll say one thing about that son of a gun. He lasted a lot longer than I figured he would. Well, you can say that again. We're never gonna get rid of that little son of a gun. Yeah, he even like Mushy's cooking. Well, what's wrong with that? Wow. Wow. Ain't this a happy little group? Where's Albert? What happened to you, Jimbo? Oh, I was showing our new boss there the red dog trick. Red dogging? How come? You said to train him. It's kind of heavy training, ain't it? We thought we'd rough him up a little and he'd want to leave and you'd come back. How'd it go? It didn't. How'd it go with you? I mean, oh, fine. Oh, absolutely fine. Where's Albert? Oh, he's in his office. Over there under that tree. Gil, good to see you. Gil, it's just like I thought it was going to be. I can't wait until we get started. I'm afraid I got a little bad news for you, Al. Nothing wrong with Maribel. No, 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 it's the bank. The bank? I'm afraid I, well, I just didn't do so hot. Uh, townspeople insist if you're not back by tomorrow morning, they're gonna run on the bank and close it down. Oh, gee, Gil, I can't do that. I'm, I'm pulling out first thing in the morning. But look, you, you could do me a favor. But the bank will go broke. Oh, the bank's got plenty of money to pay him back. Look, well, what about this is Maribel? what I want you to do. Oh, forget about Maribel. I've got a trust fund set up for her. It's about tomorrow, Gil. I'm going to start off real early. And I want to make sure that Maribel's there watching me lead the herd out. And I want you to be sure to get Maribel out there real early, too, to watch me. I'm going to take him across the river in front of the whole town. Al, don't you understand? The town likes and needs you. Across the river? Yeah. You can't take them across the river here. Yeah? That's one big bog down there right now. Oh. You've got to go around by the foothills. I, I crossed it myself this afternoon. Well, that's different. Sure, one rider might get through and back on a dry strip, but a whole herd spread out and bunched up, they'd go under. Oh, You've got to go the other way. Don't worry, Gil. I got it all figured out. Look, you'll lose half the herd. You've got to go the other oh, way. Gil, you said yourself. The trail boss has the final word. Well, I think I'll turn in. It's been a hard day. Well, no, no, no. You can't go, um, not on your last night. No? Oh, haven't you ever read about that? Oh, yeah, sure. It's expected of you, you and the men, to have a final night on the town. Oh, no, I... Well, what kind of respect would the men have for a trail boss who didn't have a little red eye and look over the girls on his last night? Well, they're getting ready back there right now, expecting it. They've been telling me how good you've been doing up till now. They have? Well, you wouldn't want to let them down, would you? No, I sure could. Good. I'll see I you would. at the Red Diamond. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh. All right, everybody up. Come on, you're getting ready to go into town. I'm talking oh, about it. That's an order. You get into the Red Diamond and you make sure that Albert's with you. Does that mean you're going to be our boss again, Mr. Favor? Well, we'll see. Who is it? Gil Baker. Something terrible's happened to Albert, Tom. as I know it. Oh, take it easy, Belle. Oh, tell me something. Do you really want Albert back? Oh, yes. 
Oh, yes. I've, I've been sitting here all evening thinking about how awful I've been. All I cared about was what other people thought. I don't care anymore. I just want him back. I don't know what happened to me, Gil. I, I got scared, I guess. I didn't know how the people would take it. Albert marrying me and all. And so if Albert had lots of respect, some of it might rub off on you, huh? Look, Belle, all you gotta do is be your old self. People gonna like you more than enough. And they like Albert, too. They showed you that this afternoon. Oh, I, I know that now, but it's too late now. Maybe not. Will you do anything to get him back? Anything. All right. you want to do this? Sherry, Sherry, why don't you say me we? Now that we've met, why don't you set the day for you and me? I must say au revoir. I hate to go. I love you so, but I must say au revoir. Maribel, <laughs> you're coming home with me right now. But, but, I said right now. Oh, Albert. Albert, I've been all wrong. You can play cowboy all you want to. A man's got to have his dreams. Really? Well, I've got a contract with Mr. Faber. Oh, don't give it another thought. It's just a little old piece of paper. Please, Albert. Well, yeah, 
we'll sure miss you, boss. <laughs> yeah, we sure will. Well, the, the bank needs my attention, and much as I'd love to go with you fellas, my, my duty comes first. Oh, Albert. No. Oh. Well, here's the contract, Mr. Faber. Oh, uh, Gil, we, uh, we found the thief, the fellow that took that money. Yeah, he was awfully sorry. He, uh, he's learned his lesson, though. He, he won't do it anymore. Oh, don't give it another thought. Teach you a lesson, Jake. Work as hard as he does, make something of yourself, too. All right, Mr. Wiley. Sandbag, if you please. Uh, move this, change that, nail here, bend there. You think this work of art was being made for John Wilkes Booth? Uh, uh. Uh. That all right? A little to my left. It should be dead center. Uh, an inch either way can't make no difference, especially to a sandbag. Hey, hey! Perfect. Hope to tell you. I have to lift that once more. My back and me going to part company. Would you stand back? Please, just to... Mr. Wiley, is the way a trap should work. Don't see why the board prop wouldn't do. Either way, a man gets hung just as fast. Just as dead, Mr. Wiley, but not just as fast. To a man with a noose around his neck, a second could be a lifetime, and a minute can be an eternity. Now, it is our job to make this execution just as professional, just as quick, and just as merciful as possible. Do I make myself clear? As clear as it can get. Then we understand each other. Now, once I get the proper specification, we can make a few tests with the rope. It, uh, makes sure that you secure it directly over that trap. And, uh, Mr. Wiley, use a ladder. We don't want you to hurt yourself. The bandage on your head. My rifle put it there. Next time, bam! Belt buckle. Ain't no bandage made gonna fix that. Jake, what's the matter with your gear and gone off? You heard what Pa said. No trouble. Leastways, not here in town. Not no trouble, Mark. Uh, no shooting trouble. I thought you'd gone back to the drive. I go back without supplies, and those drovers will put me into the stew. Now, Hannibal. I know, I know. I should have told you why I was coming here, but I didn't. I'm, I'm sorry. 
No, it isn't that. It's this fella Judd Hammerkline and him killing the fella that shot his son. Well, this town don't think he ought to hang. They're not about to let you spring that trap. That's the concern of the authorities, not mine. Well, from where I stand, there don't seem to be an awful lot of authority around here. It's an occupational hazard, you might say. I'm used to it. Well, I still think... Don't you worry about my cloudy sky, Wishbone. I was born under it. But it's better, I think, if you leave, just in case. Sometimes innocent bystanders are mistaken for friends. So play the drum slowly and play the fife lowly and play the good work. Sir, if uh, you don't mind, I should like some particulars. Yeah, I know I've done wrong. Well, it's your time. You start particularing away. Now, first, a confirmation. The uh, execution will take place at 3 p.m. tomorrow, correct? Right? Mm -hmm. And there will be a doctor in attendance. I don't know, Dr. Meredith. He's out on that Ruiz spread. You see, Miss Ruiz, she's going on her sixth. Asa, seventh. Seventh, you know her. She always brews up a storm for before she lets Christabel pass out them cigars. Now, the death certificate will require a signature. I'll leave that up to you. And the vital statistics now, if you will. Well, let's see. I was born on a Mississippi flatboat. My family was always taken to traveling. That was in, let me see, 1820. That'll make me exactly 50. That's on my next birthday. I need three facts, no more, no less. Oh, yeah, I forgot. My age, my weight, and my height. Sheriff, if you don't mind, I'd like this information from you, please. Hangman, talk to me. What's the matter? You afraid I'll haunt you or something? All right. I know your age. Well, that nice. That makes us friends. There's nothing nicer than being hung by a friend. Your height. I stand 6'2". I weigh 230. Thank you. Mr. Hangman. Something else you ain't got in that little brown book of yours. The reason why he is here and I'm here, those are the only reasons that I need to give. Man that won't reason's a liar. Man that can't reason's a fool. And a man that's afraid to reason, I just don't think he's any man at all. You want the reasons? Fine. I need your age to tell me how long it will be before your heart stops beating. I need your height in order to know the position of the noose above the cervical vertebrae and whether to use 10 or 13 wraps in the knot. I need your weight in order to know the length of the drop. Too high and your head will be separated from your shoulders too short, and I run the risk of a long strangulation, the worst possible type of execution. It's medieval and barbaric. So, gentlemen, call me a fool, call me a liar, call me nothing at all. The facts remain the same. Hey, sir. I could get to dislike that guy without any trouble at all. This ought to do it. 200 pounds at least. Oh, that's not enough weight, Mr. Wiley. Better add another 50 pounds to make sure. I still can't see what difference a little sand is going to make. I said 50 pounds, Mr. Wiley. Yeah. 50 pounds. Yeah. This is the last of it, Mr. Wishbone. I don't like it. Why not? 
The man said the flour's first rate, and there ain't nothing but sugar in the sugar. The thing's in the wagon, Mushy. I wasn't talking about supplies. Oh, yes, sir. Looks like a pack of hyenas watching and waiting. You don't stand a chance. As soon as they get tired of waiting, he's gonna be like a mouse in a box full of cats. I don't care what he says, he don't stand a chance. We gotta do something, Mr. Wishbone. Even if he is the hangman, it just ain't right. Yeah, we can try. Won't do much good. To stop a thing like this before it gets started takes an awful lot of law. That's one thing dead horse don't seem to have a lot of. You give up checkers. Third time in a row, I've skinned you blind. Judd, it's like a boil. First, you don't notice it, and then it becomes a part of you. Then the poison keeps creeping out. I got an answer for that. Just gut it out. You talk to that little hangman. You can't buy him off, and he ain't running scared. Look, Ace, when you got a stake in something, like land, cattle, money, he ain't scared. And you got people working for you like I have. They do a job just for the sake of doing it a few dollars. They run scared. Maybe. Maybe not. But, Judd, you get to pushing too hard, you're going to find this right in the middle of it. Whether I like it or not, this has got to be right smack dab in the middle. Judd, killing a little card sharp gambler that needed killing is one thing. But killing a little twisted neck hangman that don't need a darn thing. Hey, so who said anything about killing? I don't need saying. Anybody with half a nose can smell it. And the stink isn't 20 miles outside of town under a pile of rocks, either. It's right here, right outside your door, Sheriff. Nothing's happened and nothing is going to happen. And let's play a little game of supposing. Supposing something does happen. Supposing that overgrown, overfed mob out there does bust loose. How are you going to stop it? What do you expect me to do? Deputize some men. Put some rifles between Hannibal and that mob out there. All right. You get the men. I'll hang the badges on them. All right, all right. Look. There's not a man in this state will shoot me. You can take my word for that. Do you want to help? Take your little hangman back where you found him. Not where we found him. That's where your boys left him buried alive. All right, Sheriff. We'll try to get Hannibal out of this coffin he's making himself. But then, you're going to have to finish the job for him. Come on, Mushy. It's getting a little stuffy in here. <laughs> Is a smart Alec. Specified weight. A few more tests, there won't be any margin for error. Well, he's still at it. Busy, busy, busy. I'm getting tired of watching him, awful tired. How about you boys? You getting tired too? Well, what you need is a little exercise. It's just a thing before supper. Uh, just 
just a minute now, Peter. Well, well, surprise. If it ain't our two little cow driving friends. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I thought you were gonna pick up your supplies and clippity-clop back to your cows. We're just on our way. Hannibal, why don't you come on with us? That uh, stormy sky of yours is getting a little worse. As I said, Wishbone, I was born with it. You better go. Hannibal, the time for talking is over. We got our own way to make him change his mind. Oh, uh, if you've got anything to do with Mr. Hannibal, you're going to have to step over me. <laughs> <laughs> now, that is a thought. The supply wagon is coming in. Hallelujah. Food. Your right is with them. But I don't see Senor Wishbone or Senor Mush. Is this the Gil Favor outfit? That's it. And that wagon belongs to it along with its riders. Where are they? Tied up. Inside. It's just about far enough. If it was I you, I'd play tree and start taking root. These boys don't miss. Now, you heard the boy. This is all about. Friend of yours. Little fellow with a bent neck. It seems he got lost. We brought him back to you. and got himself a little dirty. One little man with a bent neck. Because there's some of his garbage. Now, we put him in a grave and you dug him up. That was one mistake. Now, another mistake was bringing him in the dead horse. And we don't count past two, Favor. Now, you just keep going. Don't look back. Don't leave any garbage behind. Jumped us, that's what happened. Must have been 50 of them. Where's Mr. Hannibal? He's over in camp. Poor little fella. Didn't even fight back. Took him without a whimper, too. Mushy, get me coal oil, lard, and rags, and lots of it. Yes, sir. Hey, Seuss, will you get me another kettle of hot water, please? Si, senor. What'd they do it? There's a man in Dead Horse supposed to get hung tomorrow. It isn't going to come off if the fellow that's supposed to spring the trap isn't there. Hannibal? Hannibal H. Plew, hangman. Professional hangman. Hmm. All right, all of you, clear out of here. Come on, Mushy, bring that stuff. Jesus, put it on the fire.
Ding man. Sure, those hammer clients mean what they say. I'm sure they got the men to back it up. That don't make any difference. Me, I got a lump the side of my head the size of a six egg skillet. Mushy got bounced around like a ball on a string. Hannibal here, well, you can see what they did to him. They backed Mushy and me up, tied us down, and made us watch him. Well, I said it'd make us be careful who we run with. And they tied him up against his scaffold and rolled in the tar pot. Every blessed one of them had to swipe at him with that tar. Uh, and then they kept at it, hooping and hollering like it was some kind of celebration or something. It's over and done with, Wish. Forget it. Forget it? Look, Wish, what do you want us to do? Go into Dead Horse and do Hannibal's job for him? It's just like you said, Wish. His boys did the tar, and it's their old man sitting in that cell. And I don't know, maybe... Maybe I'd do the same thing if it was my dad. Stand up for your old man? Sure, walk through a wall if you had to. But bushwhack a man that can't defend himself and then dump boiling tar on him? Oh, no. Well, what is it? What do you want us to do about it? Well, right into town, Mr. Favor, and just bust that town over their heads. You might as well get to busting right here and now, starting in with me. Well, if it isn't a red brick courthouse of dead horse, the pride and joy of law and order. What happens, Sheriff? You lose your jurisdiction? Oh, I'm gonna have to have some coffee to hold that down. Hot and black. Hey, you take off that badge. I'll give you some coffee. Pot Wait. and all. For the man's coffee. Thank you. You might be guilt favor. I'm Ace the Tanner, the High Sheriff of Union County. How is he? Oh, fine. After being buried alive, he was powerball, that's all. A few burns, a few more bruises. He'll be all right. Tried to bring the right medicine. I brought this. Whiskey drummer said this would bring a mummy back to life. You want some? Mind if I did? All right, I didn't like it. What happened? I didn't like it either. Oh, I didn't know you noticed being locked up in your office and all. I noticed, and I also noticed 50 guns out there and give or take a few. I only carry one. We should have stopped it, Sheriff. You shouldn't have let it happen. I'd have tried. Some of those guns that went off. Yeah, maybe you, maybe the hangman, maybe you, maybe me, maybe some old friends of mine. We'd all be fertilizing daisies about now. What for? A hanging that ain't gonna come off anyway. A dozen round words set down in a red brick courthouse, 30 years away from a world that's just now learning how to read and write. I ain't saying that hangman's wrong, and I ain't saying dead horse is right. All I'm saying, it ain't worth dying for. Uh-uh. Not for me. Maybe not for you. You leave dead horse to me, I'll take care of them. But I'm gonna do it my own way, and that's a promise. When he comes around, buy him a drink on the house, will you? So long. All right, boys, that's it for tonight. Got a lot of miles to chew come sun up. Better stay that way, too, least till those burns heal. Tar can be a lot worse than fire. Yes, well, I'm obliged to you for the second time, sir. Whatever you do, don't go for three, Hannibal. Which one's running out of medicine? Uh, I'm afraid these aren't very much, senor, but I couldn't find anything else close enough to your size. <laughs> to a man. Hey, Susu has just taken off a tar overcoat. 
Sackcloth and ashes would seem to be the height of fashion. All right, Hood's getting impatient. Let's get rolling. Come on. Ah, well, well. Outside of the bandages, you look like you're getting back to normal. <laughs> yes, I'm afraid I've turned your cattle drive into a rolling hospital, sir. That's all part of the service. Besides, it gives Wishbone a chance to experiment. Uh, Mushy's fixed up a bed for you in the supply wagon. You ought to be able to get used to it after a day or two. Well, thank you, Mr. Favor, but I'll have to turn down your hospitality once more. See, I'm going back to Dead Horse. Going where? Back, Miss Favor. I want to, uh, Finish my job. It's your job? It's a job that I, uh, that won't be finished until after three o'clock this afternoon. Oh, gentlemen, it's not as bad as that. It's just the bandages that make it look as bad as it is. I'll just manage it fine. You'll manage fine. Hannibal, if you think you're going back in there to commit suicide, you got hit in the harder in the head than I thought you did. Yeah, why, Hannibal? I mean, uh, what's the hanging a man you never even met and taking a chance on getting yourself killed just for nothing? Nothing. Rowdy, to a young man once named Hannibal, the town of Dead Horse would have been just that, nothing. A quaint name on a frontier map, a strange and violent little world in which the light was gray because the black and white of right and wrong and crime and punishment not only didn't matter, it didn't exist. And that young Hannibal was a doctor, a very young doctor with a very young wife, a very small practice, a very small town. And this young wife was to bring forth their firstborn, child, uh, but nature decreed otherwise. There were complications, and learned old Dr. McCreary, he with a carbolic and iodoform odor experience in his whiskers, he preached caution. But young Dr. Hannibal, 11 months, 11 long months out of medical school, disagreed. And he decided to take nature into his own hands. He performed a cesarean operation. Gentlemen, not with knowledge, but with guesswork. And the uh, young wife died. And so also did his son. And they called him a wife killer and a butcher. And they took him out behind a warehouse and they put a rope around his neck. And they pushed him off of platform. And the law officers came to take him down, but not until he had dangled at the end of that rope forever. If only he could have died. But he didn't. And his neck was broken. A doctor who was no longer a doctor and a man who was no longer a man wrote a strange new chapter in medical history. After that, there was nothing left for him. Neither life nor even death, but only the scaffold. See, it was on the scaffold that his existence was suspended. And therefore, the scaffold was all that he knew and all that he knows. You take that away from him, and there's nothing. And that, gentlemen, is why I have to keep the appointment in Dead Horse. Perhaps you were right, Jesus. Perhaps Henrietta really is a pale horse. And perhaps the name of him who sits on her back really is death. Till we meet again, gentlemen.
Don't say it. Don't even think it. Look, Bob. I know where you found it. It doesn't make any difference. What he is, what's waiting for him in Dead Horse, that is his business. If he wants to get himself killed, that is his business, not ours. Now, Mr. Favor. I know how he looked last night, and I heard what the lawman said, but that's the way he wants it. And we got a herd to move, so let's get moving. Well, Mr. Favor, we can't let... We can, Mushy, and we will. Now, use your head, will you? We're cattlemen, not avenging angels. We don't know anything about what happened in that town. But what do you want us to do, anyways? Go in there and spring Hannibal's trap ourselves? Uh, Senor Favor... I know, Jesus, I know. I know. Rowdy, turn the herd in, put four men on circle. The rest of you saddle up fresh horses. I'm afraid it's gonna be a long ride. And a dead horse and back. <laughs> dismantle the scaffold. The least you can do is start with a frame. Get out, get out. Could be worse. The platform's still intact here. Mister! 12.20, a little less than uh, three hours. It's not much time, but we can make it. Make it? Rebuild the scaffold, of course. Three o'clock is the time set for the hanging, and three o'clock the hanging will take place. Let's get started here. I told you, it's him. He's come back. Fool. Crazy fool. You stay put, Judge, you hear? I hear. Belt buckle, I promise him that. Hangman! Twice you got told, and twice it didn't take. The third time is a charm. Jake! I hate to use this on you, boy, but you better put that six-shooter back where you got it from. Well, that ain't gonna stop this, Sheriff. Neither is that bad. What's going on at books is a fair try. I told you I didn't want no shooting, and I, I mean that. Like you said, Asa, no shooting. out for a little ride, Hannibal. Yeah, boys need to change. What happened, sonny boy? Did you lose your tar pot? It was done, Favor. Dead, gone, and forgotten, and you're digging it up. Why? Make sure it stays buried to see that Hannibal walks away from this. We'd also like to make sure that your way of settling this is the only way. Of course, how it comes out, that'd be up to you. Like I say, we're just out for a ride. 
We don't count past two, Favor. Remember? Three times and you're dead. Charlie, go get Mark and the rest of the boys, all of them. I mean, right now. I said it once and I'll say it again. I ain't gonna let you turn this town into an old graveyard. Neither one of you. Stop it, Sheriff. Afraid that'll be your problem. Ours is Hannibal. But we're gonna be sticking around until it's solved. Both of them. Wiley, back to work. Come on, Judd. Come on, Judd. That's a half hour to go. Both Mark and the boys will be riding in pretty soon. Uh-huh. My talking to them ain't gonna scare them off any more than that scattergun scared those cowboys off. Figures. Judd. This ain't dead horse against that little miserable hangman anymore. It ain't me and you and your kids against that noose out there. This could mean the lives of some good men. Some of them pretty dear and close to us. Hey, sir, you show me a way out of this, I'll listen your ears off. There's always one. Grab a hold of that six-shooter and part my hair with it. Get yourself a horse and ride him till he drops. Keep running till all this makes sense once again. Hey, sir. Huh? You know I never run from nothing my whole life. I reckon. It's always the first time. Judd, this could be your life. Sheriff, I thought you'd best know. Some riders coming in, about 20 of them. Gotta be Mark. You, you'd be Judd Hammerklein. Yeah, that's right. And trail boss, why don't you get out of here? What, you got two arms and two legs? Oh, I'd be glad to, but not without Hannibal. I'm afraid Hannibal ain't gonna leave until he finishes what he comes to do. I'm afraid that's the way it stands. Well, that puts us right back smack dab where we started out. No, not us, Sheriff. Just Mr. Hammerklein. Your boys won't back down. Hannibal will, he don't know how to. So that puts it in your lap. What you did while you're in here, that don't much matter now. Because if you don't all of a sudden make time stand still, every gun in this town is gonna go off. Right or wrong, it's gonna go off. And 10, 20, maybe 30 men are gonna go down. Your men, my men. There's not much guarantee that anybody will come out of this. And why? Who's right, who's wrong? Well, if you come up with an answer, I sure wish you'd let me know. But you'd better do it fast. Judd, this is all my doing. The day you killed that little gander, I should have never held you for that trial. No, sir. 
to kill you myself. Clean and easy. And this is from a friend. Yet, you don't get on, you might be. Come on. Take a hold of the business end of this. Took you long enough. Well, uh, I had to pick up some extra men. Charlie said we might need them. Let's go! Hey, sir, that scaffold's coming down. And the hangman and his friends are coming down with it. Uh, their way or our way don't much matter. Are you in it or are you out of it? Boys, I set this out all last night. I'm tired of setting and sweating. You pull one of those triggers, I'm gonna pull two. Oh, that's too bad, Asa. You were a pretty good sheriff, too. I'm going to walk up there, and I want you to walk with me. You're going to do what? I'm going to walk to him. While I'm walking, I'm going to talk. You listen. Nothing else. Just listen. Now, look. Remember when your mom died? When the diphtheria hit? There were no doctors there, no help. There were just four of us. You got it first, then me, and then your mom. But she stayed on her feet. Me, I couldn't help her. Because the fever burned me right down to the bone. I couldn't help at all. Do you remember she used to give us a mixture of coal on and gunpowder to swab our throats? I can still taste it. Bothering time. Now, you listen to me. Right now, if she beat diphtheria, she beat it right into the ground. Not for her, but for us. And after this, she died. And I want to tell you one thing. That's what you wanted. This is what she gave us. And I figure right now it's time that maybe I gave her something back. You two boys, that's what I'm going to give her. Pa, if you think we're going to stand here and watch you go up there... Mark, give me your gun. Now. Here's two, Jake. Judge, you can't go through with these. All right, all right. This is the way it's going to be. No guns, no shooting. The judge says that's for me. Maybe the tomorrow's he was talking about is here. And shooting off a lot of guns ain't gonna change anything or chase it away. That's the way I want it. What I did, I'll pay for. Not you. Not you cowpunchers out there. And not him. That's the way I want it. The first guy that starts to lift a gun, I'll kill him myself. Now look, I've, I've, I've done well, fellas. Better than most. You do half as well, and I'll be proud of you. Just remember that, will you?
I take it to be five minutes before the hour, is that right? All right, let's get on with it. I don't want to hold you up. Jen, you want me to read a few words? Well, I never needed it before. There's no reason why I should have it now. Now, if you want to read it to yourself, I guess it'll serve the same purpose. Don't fight it. A few seconds, I promise. Hangman, don't worry, I won't hurt you. You won't have to. I manage that myself. and the life. He who believes in me, though he dies, shall live. Whoever believeth in me shall never die. All right, Sheriff. You can cut him down now. And I looked, behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on his back was Death. Mm -hmm. 